consent that the vote not begin until following my remarks. Is there objection? Seeing none. Thank you, Madam President. In a minute, I'm going to ask unanimous consent for approval of three important nominees who are not controversial. We've been hearing reasons to oppose a nominee who has some controversy. I'm going to raise three who are not controversial. In July, I had the opportunity to travel to Mexico, Ecuador, Colombia, and Guatemala as part of a bipartisan congressional delegation. And the first question we received in Mexico was not about COVID-19, not about immigration. It was, when is your ambassador going to get here? Fortunately, since then, the Senate has approved the nomination of Ken Salazar to be ambassador to Mexico, but the exchange underscores the importance of having U.S. ambassadors on the ground and the value that other nations see in Senate-confirmed representatives of the United States. I take the floor today to talk about three non-controversial nominees, Adam Scheinman of Virginia to be special representative of the President for nuclear nonproliferation, Mark Ostfield to be ambassador to Paraguay, and Cynthia Tellez to be ambassador to Costa Rica. Mr. Scheinman has had a long history in the State Department, National Security Council, White House on nuclear nonproliferation issues. Mark Ostfield is a career Foreign Service officer with deep experience in the Americas. And Cynthia Tellus is the daughter of the first Hispanic to be a United States ambassador. Her father was U.S. ambassador to Costa Rica 60 years ago, and after a very distinguished career, she's been nominated to inherit the post that he ably inhabited. These were all nominees approved non-controversially by the Foreign Relations Committee on October 19th, nearly two months ago. And it is particularly important, I just mentioned to my colleagues, one thing about Mr. Scheinman, particularly important that he, that he be confirmed as soon as possible. An important duty of the special representative of the President for Nuclear Nonproliferation is to lead the U.S. delegation to the Nonproliferation of Nuclear Weapons Treaty Review Conference. This conference happens once every five years. Once every five years, and it's going to happen next month. If he is not confirmed before then, the United States will not have an ambassador-level official to lead the American delegation at this existentially important meeting. I ask unanimous consent that the Senate consider the following nominations, executive calendars 433, 436, and 439, that the nominations be confirmed, the motions to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table, with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order on these nominations, that any related statements be printed in the record, and that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action. Is there objection? Madam President. The Senator from Texas. Reserving the right to object. The eyes of history are on the Senate today. If the Nord Stream 2 pipeline comes online, as it is on the verge of doing, the odds of Russian tanks rolling into Ukraine increase dramatically. We have imposed sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline with bipartisan unity. We can do it again. If Russian tanks roll into Kiev, who in this chamber wants that on their conscience? We need to stop Russia from invading Ukraine. And the only way to do it is by imposing sanctions on Nord Stream 2. We did that two years ago. We overwhelmingly passed bipartisan sanctions that President Trump signed into law. And it's worth explaining why these two are linked, because we're all reading in the newspaper. We've all sat, my friend from Virginia, he and I have sat in briefings, classified and public briefings, that over 100,000 Russian troops are massed on the Ukraine border. The administration declassified its own projections that an invasion of Ukraine is imminent and could come as soon as January or February of next year. This disaster is the direct result of a political mistake made by Joe Biden. 
What does the Nord Stream 2 pipeline have to do with Russia invading Ukraine? Well, a little bit of ancient history. The year 2014, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Why? He did it because he has said that he considers the dissolution of the Soviet Union to be the greatest geopolitical disaster of the 21st century. And his grand ambition is to recreate the Soviet Union by force. A reassembled Soviet Union would be a profound threat to the safety of all Americans. We spent decades with a dangerous Soviet Union. 2014, Putin invaded Ukraine, invaded Crimea, but he stopped. He didn't go through all of Ukraine. Why did he stop? He stopped because Russian natural gas to get to Europe goes through Ukraine. The pipelines go through Ukraine. Invoke regular order. This is not a response to any of these three nominations. Is there an objection to the request? Reserving the right to object, and there's nothing in regular order that limits my ability to explain my view on this topic. So, at the sufferance, at the sufferance of the chair. At the sufferance of the chair. Uh, Democrats don't want to talk about Joe Biden's gift to Russia and Putin that has set up the tanks on the border of Ukraine. Madam President. Is there an objection to the original request? Is the chair refusing to let me speak? The Senate has a scheduled vote. You see that members have made their way to the floor. We have a lot of business to take care of, as you see. And just uh, a moment ago, the, the chair granted unanimous consent that that time be extended until the, this unanimous consent request is concluded. That is the pending UC that was granted. Madam President, I, I don't want him to do that. That's for sure. I, let him do that. If Senator Kane or the chair wants to silence me because you don't want to hear what is happening in Ukraine, you can try to do that. M Madam President, we have no interest in siling silencing Senator Cruz. In fact, the Democrats agreed to allow Senator Cruz to present his amendment on Nord Stream 2 last week, and it was blocked by Republican colleagues. I've made a request for unanimous consent about two ambassadors to the Americas and about someone who needs to attend a nuclear non-proliferation conference and lead a delegation from the United States. It happens once every five years. It's coming up. The senator is allowed to speak about Nord Stream as long as he wants, but he shouldn't interrupt a UC for these three individuals <laughs> to give a speech that he's given many times and he's going to continue to give many times. And I'm sure we're all going to hear it many times. I would like a ruling on my request for unanimous consent on these three nominees. Is there an objection to the original request? Ma Madam President. I object, and the chair and the Democrats are hiding from the truth. The objection is heard. Under the previous order, the question is on the nomination. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Bennett, Mrs. Blackburn, Mr. Blumenthal, 